Hi all, welcome to part 34, module 2 computer network. So this is probably the last video lecture uh, given on the topic of Ethernet and let's see. So we were discussing different variations of Ethernet, uh, started from the classic Ethernet, then the so called fast Ethernet or variations of switch Ethernet like fast Ethernet, gigabit Ethernet. Now we move on to another uh, the, va the variation called the 10 gigabit ethernet so of course you can see that the speed is now 10 times more than the so called gigabit ethernet right so this work followed much uh, the same pattern as the previous ethernet standards with uh, standards for fiber and shielded copper so it come in the uh, different variation the first category that was running over fiber that came in 2002 then uh, we have the 10 gigabit ethernet that runs over shielded copper cable and that came in existence by 2004 followed by the one that runs over the copper twisted pair so when it is able to wo work over twisted pair of course it is an inexpensive one even right so that is why people are trying in that direction so the fiber optic of course it will give that performance fine but it's an expensive solution so if we can make that 10 gigabits per second speed with the copper twisted pair uh, that is inexpensive that is a very good achievement so that is what uh, we have in the year 2006 so the 10 gigabits per second is you get truly a uh, pretty good speed right so that is something like a thousand times faster than the original ethernet so the original ethernet is just 10 megabits per second so now in that mega now we have the giga right so it is thousand times more faster yeah. so where it is needed uh, actually is it needed just for our local area networks or something beyond that of course the answer is inside the data centers right uh, and exchanges uh, to connect high-end routers switches and servers as well as uh, in long distance high bandwidth trunks between offices that are enabling the entire metropolitan area network based ethernet and fiber so for uh, the implementation of the metropolitan area network and for connecting devices inside data centers like high-end routers switches servers and all it is uh, preferred to use uh, this 10 gigabits per second ethernet the long distance connections uses uh, typically if the communication is uh, long distance then you can go for optical fiber and for a short distance uh, uh, the, uh, connection with the 10 gigabit ethernet you can go for the copper or the fiber uh, variation so all versions of the 10 gigabit ethernet supports uh, full duplex operation only so because it is uh, for high-end application that is enough right though the csma bar cd is not only a longer part of the design because why we have to uh, make the things complicated as we have a full duplex switch based technology we can adopt right and the standards concentrate on the details of the physical layer and that can run uh, at very high speed so as you increase the speed at the net, net data link layer parallelly the physical layer should support that so that is the direction people were working when they come up with this kind of a technology so physical layer how we can improve right so the compatibility still matters Matters. so by this auto negotiation you can now uh, negotiate uh, the speed uh, with the other 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 party so uh, the 10 gigabit ethernet interface uh, interfaces uh, auto negotiate and fall back to the highest speed that is being support supported by both ends so in that way they can have negotiation and I hope you remember here mm, like a 4b bar 5b is what we used in fast ethernet then 8b bar 10b for gigabit ethernet now 64b bar 66b uh, encoding technique is what we used in 10 gigabit ethernet so if you look at the cabling it uh, come across different variations like the twisted pair the um, the hand shielded uh, twi twin x uh, co copper uh, that kind of uh, technology category 6a and shielded twisted pair fiber optic itself we have uh, for short range communication long range communication and extended range so extended range is extending the maximum segment length up to 40 kilometer and this long range 10 kilometer and this up to 300 meter we are used having different uh, fibers with the uh, specification like a 0.85 micron uh, multi-mode fiber single mode fiber with 1.3 micron and 1.5 micron respectively for LR and ER so like that we have a variation the first three is like uh, what we already seen so and we used them uh, initially then we tried this uh, maybe this in the year 2006 now let's uh, go so that about uh, the variations of the ethernet now let's go through uh, just a quick recap of what we have learned so ethernet has been around for uh, 
so quick recap of the ethernet technology okay so it was there for the last uh, 30 years with no serious competitors at all uh, so it is likely to be around for many years in the near future even right it's a very dominant powerful technology so probably the main reason for its longevity is that the ethernet is simple and flexible compared to other similar technology of course what makes it uh, such a wonderful technology for this much long duration is uh, its uh, simplicity and flexibility and uh, uh, symbol that word translate into the reliable reliable cheap and easy to maintain technology so it's a uh, highly reliable cheap per and easy to maintain technology is what we have so on the hub band switch architectures are adopted features become extremely rare sorry sorry failure become extremely rare uh, so you don't have to worry about failure and you can simply move on but in case of uh, that bus topology we already seen is failures and difficulty in uh, detecting them so like that many issue we faced and those problems were not at all be there in hub band switch and particularly with the switch we can even uh, go with without any uh, I mean collision detection kind of things right so the twisted pair wiring is relatively inexpensive so that is what makes the te technology as a whole inexpensive and are the uh, as, as are the hardware components so ethernet is easy to maintain why that term because the adding new host uh, into ethernet is as simple as uh, just plugging them so there is no software to be installed um, other than the basic drivers and not much uh, in the way of configuration table nothing right so it is uh, so simple to use another point is that ethernet uh, inter works easily with the tcp ip model and tcp ip is about the higher layer the transport and the network layer we will be seeing them in the coming future just like ethernet in the data link layer tcp ip is a very good combination that is dominant in our current uh, uh, scenario uh, so both are very successful and both will work easily with each other right why it is so because ip the internet protocol the core protocol of the tcp ip architecture is connection less protocol and it's perfectly perfectly work with the ethernet because ethernet is also connection less but if you are looking at um, the another similar technology like uh, atm um, th that is something uh, similar to ethernet another data link layer technology is uh, this so called atm and which is connection oriented alternative and ip fits much less because ip is connect preferring connection less communication but this uh, so called atm is connection oriented so such problems were there so many alternate technologies were faster than ethernet of course when they introduced but later on ethernet started uh, beating their speed right so like uh, atm uh, some similar competitors for this uh, ethernet uh, that time were the fiber distributed data interface then another one is fiber channel and both are two ring topology based optical uh, local area network te technology uh, some kind of competitors but com even though it is competi uh, competitors uh, at the time when they introduced uh, later on uh, the ethernet simply dominated them all so both were incompatible with the ethernet of course and uh, what make them uh, less attractive because they are very complicated and led to complex chips and high prices so the chip is very co complex uh, in design and of course high prices so these uh, two things were just opposite for ethernet so that is very simple and it is uh, less expensive right so that makes ethernet a powerful overage so eventually ethernet caught up and them in terms of speed of course often by borrowing some of their technology so what ethernet does is why these uh, fddi or fiber channel they were faster maybe because of the signal encoding technique they used so ethernet also started using such technology like if you remember this 5b bar uh, 4b bar 5b is what is the what is used in fddi and this is what we borrowed and used in our fast ethernet similarly 8b bar 10b the technique used in fiber channel is what we borrowed and used in the gigabit ethernet. and so like that internet also tried to achieve the similar or better performance so they then they had no advantage left and quietly died off uh, or uh, fell into specialized roles yeah that uh, makes this ethernet a very wonderful technology yes with that let's uh, wind up our discussion on ethernet thanks for listening if you have any doubt uh, again i am repeating you can ask me in our discussion common discussion classes here whenever possible